I also look crazy. up the Bunny Girl incident in Honkai 3rd as an example. Now, I don't even get how you're supposed to censor Azulane at this point. Put a whole ass trash bag over them, but whatever. Gacha games have always- Azulane is crazy. Uh, I saw some uh, censorship comparison between Azulane, essentially like some ladies in the global version. You can see like this side booba essentially, uh, but in Chinese version, the whole booba is hidden as well. There's just more fabric essentially. Uh, so yeah, whatever. Please. Let's have a look at this video. Um, I've been sent this uh, and essentially it seems like a lot of people are essentially complaining about the current trend in gacha games. I don't know if it's a trend. It's just like some gacha game do go hard in fan service. And honestly, I, I think like Nikkei is not even the worst when it comes to that. Uh, but yeah, it's like people being outraged that like loot gacha game exists. And it's like, guys, you don't even know. There's literal hentai gacha games. There's literal hentai gacha games. Let's pretend for a moment that you're a normal person. So, someone who likely isn't watching. Yeah, exactly. I, I was about to say, a normal person? Like, anyone watching this video is not normal. In this video right now. And you're walking around your city and you see this ad. Would you find it odd? Tamini? There's so many of them. There are so many of them. I, I played one that was called, I don't remember, but it was bad. You were like the, the demon king and uh, you had to go around beating people and then fucking them. Many might find it inappropriate for children to see in such a public place. And this is actually the censored version, which arguably makes it look a lot worse than it actually is. And there are even some crazier ads out there for some games, but a lot of us are already really- Wait. They're actually censoring the, those in public? That's crazy. That actually makes it worse. Yeah, it, I, also, why are they censoring the armpits? <laughs> That's crazy. Why are they censoring the armpits? Also, yeah, what the first one. Oh, odd? that was Brown Dust 2 based. That was Teresa. For children to see in such a public place. And this is like, censoring these is crazy. Because, like, there underneath, there's nothing. It's literally just a bikini, like a full bikini. And this bikini is already censored, by the way. Actually, the censored version, which arguably makes it look a lot worse than it actually is. And there are even some crazier ads out there for some games, but a lot of us are already really decent. That ad is so weird, dude. That ad is so weird. The ad is literally yeah. just and focused on the some feet. There are crazier ads out there for some games, but a lot of us are already really desensitized to seeing something like this. Frankly, it's already a bit absurd that what's basically a gambling game is legal to advertise publicly, even to children, and isn't rated as 18 plus. However, if you've been paying attention to gotchas at all, you may have been noticing a more common trend, the coomerification of gotcha games. Making all the characters more appealing to the eyes, removing more clothing, and increasing their proportions. And yeah, I totally agree. This is happening more and more. And I think you see a lot of gacha games, when they're failing, they go toward that. Um, Tower Fantasy, right? Tower Fantasy is not working well. They're losing players every day. And now they announced a new game. And so in Tower Fantasy, they are adding ways to actually be more Kumer, right? You can go around, you can touch them in their room, you can like disrobe them and stuff like that. Um, and you get more games like this, like Snowbreak. Snowbreak, as it was not working anymore and people were leaving the game, they started to start putting, they started putting like more of those interactions you can have with the character. They started being way more loot in design, etc., etc. So it feels like when a game is not working anymore, they're just like, okay, it's time to patch in the loot shit. It's time to patch in the erotica. Let's make it work again. Let's pump as much money we can before we work on the next project. I feel like it's very much is like that. And obviously there are some games that are automatically and from the beginning geared toward a more mature audience. Um, like, you know, Brown Dust 2, Nikkei could be in that same thing. Uh, and in those cases, yeah, if they're not rated M, I think that's outrageous. Um, I think they definitely should be rated M, and I do think that those things being publicly, uh, you know, publicly advertised in 
children areas, let's put it this way, without being clearly defined as mature content is obviously a bad idea. Uh, I don't agree with that. Now, if it was clear that it was mature, um, I think that would be okay. Like, uh, it's like saying, like, people never batted an eye. Well, that's not true. Some people did. But, like, when, um, like, Shades of Grey's were advertised, right? But, yeah, it, it definitely should be rated M if they're not. That, that's I think that's a bit crazy. But uh, I, I do agree. At the end of the day, some people like those games. Some people want to play those games. And I think they have a place in the market. I, I don't think they shouldn't exist. I think it's fine. I'm not against it, I'm merely pointing it out here. Now, gacha games have always been this way since time immemorial, way back when during the gacha big bang. We've had games like Fate Grand Order and Grand Blue Fantasy near the beginning, trailblazers of the genre, both of which have some risque designs, Absolutely. eventually leading to some next level Coomer titles like yep. Azure Lane and now Snowbreak which are hard to say is anything other than just softcore hentai, but now we're starting to see some of this become more mainstream and popular, and I'll explain the reason why. The main reason for this would be money. I am never gonna financially recover from this. Imagine not knowing, like, oh, what, what a surprise! Who, who could have guessed that? <laughs> who could have guessed that? <laughs> also, I'm trying to understand what exactly Soft porn or soft pornography is pornography that shows or describes sex, but not very violent or unpleasant sex, or not in a very detailed way. But it still shows or describes sex. I think, honestly, some of those games wouldn't even fit in the category of softcore. Because they don't show... Or well, sometimes they do describe. Fair enough. Sometimes it's actually more to it. Well, sometimes it's implied. It's like implied that something's gonna happen, but it's not described. So I don't know. I, I'm not sure that something like Nikkei would be considered like softcore. It's lewd, but it's not softcore pornography or softcore hentai. Than that, and a huge reason that most people don't realize, which we'll be explaining over the course of the video. This has actually led to male character removal in some games, up to the insane situation of gotcha players taking down an entire governmental agency. Yeah, but this is insane. Like, the, the Chinese community is just absolutely mental. Okay, it's not... Some portion of the Chinese community is absolutely crazy when it comes to gacha games and the favorite waifus. They just are. Oh, my favorite waifu is talking about her past and she met a man in her past. They were not in a relationship, but how dare she talk to a man? How dare she be talking to me about a man she met? Like, this is crazy. And so people are like, oh, I'm getting cucked. How, why they're cucking us? This is NTR. And so they're losing their mind and putting pressure to the point that now companies are completely removing male characters from the game apart from the protagonist. Because some people can't handle the idea of their favorite waifu talking to another male character. Even if there's nothing, like, even if those characters are not involved with each other. Which is, like, mind-boggling. I, I don't understand that. Um, there was another case where, oh my god, there's a hentai game where uh, you have an army of waifu and you can go fight, but if your army of waifu loses, they get a bad ending, right? So essentially, enemy soldiers have sex with them. Uh, and obviously, when they have sex with them, you do see the sex scenes, right? But you can also have your own sex scenes. So either you can have your sex scene when you develop your intimacy with your characters, or you see sex scenes when your characters are losing in battle, and then you see them, you know, having intercourse with the enemy. So because this is obviously, quote-unquote, NTR, um, the thing is that there's like one male character in the game or something, so what the player are doing is that they're only using the male character. That way, if they lose, it's the male character that gets, you know, that gets fucked by the enemies instead of the waifu, so they don't get cocked. But that also means that they're voluntarily playing in a way that they only see... They only see game porn. <laughs> That is so crazy! <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine being a Chinese player and going like, I'd rather watch
watch gay porn than have my wife have sex with another character. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Which we'll be explaining later on in the video. So what are the causes of kumification and gotchas, and where do we go from here? That's what I want to cover in this <sighs> video. Oh, I'm if sorry, that really broke consider me. Consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll be making more videos like this. I okay. think most of us have heard the phrase before, sex sells, yep. and oh boy does it, <laughs> especially in anime gacha games. Players froth at the mouth to get their next super hot waifu and buy her bikini man, skins, Azulay sending skins these things off to the moon, but I would never do such a depraved thing. Now in China, they have super strict rules about sexual content, so you may think, well, things must be pretty tame then, right? Wrong. Yep. Remember that both Azure Lane and Snowbreak originate from China, and they yep. are peak degeneracy. But how can this be possible? Simple. They just censor the games in China, but release them in their fully near-naked glory to the rest of the world. Yep. You may remember that in Genshin Impact at one point, they added alternate outfits for the standard characters like Mona and Jean that covered them up more. Well, these are the basic skins in China, and you have no choice but to use them. People will also often report game companies to the government if they're pissed at something in-game, yep. and then blame it on things like it being too sexual to get the company in hot water with the government. You can also it's look crazy. up the Bunny Girl incident in Honkai 3rd as an example. Now, I don't even get how you're supposed to censor Azulay at this point. Put a whole ass trash bag over them, but whatever. Gotcha games have always- is crazy. Uh, I saw some uh, censorship comparison between Azula and essentially like some ladies in the global version. You can see like the side booba essentially, uh, but in Chinese version, the whole booba is hidden as well. There's just more fabric essentially. Uh, so yeah, whatever. Always been more male focused, even though you know half the planet is female. However, recently we've been seeing more male characters in the average gacha, especially yeah, with the release of Genshin Impact, which featured more male characters than most other gacha games. And as it turns out, women are just as horny as men for these PNGs. <laughs> this is yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, obviously we have love in this space here, um, but I think it's because. They they just cho choose their origins, right? I think Hoyoverse is really trying to have a massive global audience and just be able to have as many characters as ma so sorry no characters, as many players come into the game from the largest demographic possible, right? So they're gonna try to have male characters as well, of course. Um, but a lot of gacha they know that most people playing those games, most quote unquote gamers, tend to be <clears throat> male. So obviously they gear things toward them. But now we are slowly starting to get way more game like Love in this space who are geared toward women. Also led to I more female nice. focused gacha games such as Love in Deep Space, which is succeeding because of this untapped market of games focused for women. And if you thought birth rates were bad now, then how am I even supposed to compete with that? Unfortunately, a lot of men are not very happy about this kind of competition in their games, which leads us to one of the big problems plaguing Chinese gotchas at the moment, NTR. Now, if you don't know what NTR is, well, it's being cucked. Having your PNG waifu stolen from you by a much more handsome and attractive individual who probably even showers or walks outside of their room more than once a day. What? Something completely unachievable, unobtainable in the modern era. But where does NTR come into play? Well, one of the recent incidents was a year ago, and essentially a character in Genshin named Wander was really popular among female Genshin players, but hated by male ones because he's very arrogant and just a total jerk, really. You're so happy just to see the sun again. I still How like childish. him. There were already some tensions lurking below due to having so many male banner characters introduced in the Sumeru region, which many players dislike. Tensions eventually exploded <laughs> with this character's story, leading to a ton of male gacha gamers to become enraged that they were having their game destroyed and potential what? waifus being taken from them by what? this guy. A 10 year old when? looking kid with a big funny hat. The literal personification of sex appeal. The god of Riz. No woman can resist him. This is what peak performance looks like. If you're not only losing to a PNG, Wait. but this PNG out of all of them, you really. What does Karamush do? When did he like try to steal any character from you?
you have no game and you're probably gonna die alone. So a ton of players hated this guy, right? Well, Why? then he committed the worst crime of all. He interacted with a character called Nida and she pitied him and wanted to help him. So now... But Nida looks like she's five. Are people... Are people upset that he talked to five years old? Wait, are people jealous because he talked to a female five years old character? She's 500, I'm gonna kill you. You had the NTR men and the lollycons teaming up bitch. to display. <laughs> I feel like even if you don't like NTR, I feel like this is not a fight you wanna fight on. This is not a hill you wanna fight on. I, I think you, you let the lolly community do whatever the freak they want and you complain about like, Another fake issue, obviously. It's still fake. But, like, I, I think, like, even if you don't like NTR, you probably don't want to team up with the lollies. <laughs> That's crazy! Play their hate. They did things like hurting animals that supposedly <laughs> reminded them of one. Oh, I heard about that. Oh, this is horrendous. So, there's a big thing about Scaramouche uh, being a cat. Because, like, inside the game, there's, like, a fairy tale where he's drawn as a cat. I'm not going to go into detail. So people call him Scaramiao. Um, and so I've heard that people were hurting stray cats and killing them to get revenge on the fictional character that is one time referred to as a cat. I Under hate life. Doxy Mihoyo employees. I hate life. A classic. Spamming the community with hate. Also a classic. Harassing the VAs. Even reporting the character to the government. Which like, what the hell are they gonna do? Ban wander with a law? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Mr. Government. This character is forcing me to kill cats. Can you help me? Maybe the government should put you in jail. Seeing the hatred in this one instance helps paint the picture of how many of these players feel, but it's far from the end of the NTR train. So then another game comes along oh, called that's Girls a good, Frontline good. 2. And admittedly, the company behind it, Mika, doesn't have an amazing reputation for many reasons. Possibly also having to do with the beta version of the game. By the way, I can't wait for GF2. I cannot wait to play this game. Uh, the pre-registration just started not too long ago. It's available. I've been yapping for this, like, I've, oh my god, I'm yapping too much. Anyway, pre-registrations are open. I'm hyped for this game. It looks like a waifu, XCOM, very exciting stuff. There's gonna be some Kumar stuff, so you can interact with your waifus in, like, dorms, uh, 3D dorms and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm excited. Game that, when uninstalled, bricks your entire computer with no chance of recovery. But... The game itself looks nice. Maybe it's got some issues though. It's basically XCOM with super high quality looking waifu characters. Yeah! Nice. The so game it's releases the best. and it's going all right other than a bunch of smaller dramas and some gameplay problems, but hey, That's perfect. it's probably That's what we better want. than the Wuthering Waves launch. Then they put up a beta build for an upcoming patch for the character <laughs> Diane. This is where all hell broke loose. She yep. now wore a lightning Hold pendant. Up. Where'd she get this? It's this guy's. His name is Raymond. Supposedly in the story, they they talk a lot to each other. He looks like a background character from the anime Cells at Work, and he's also <laughs> banging your girl. Well, supposedly. Oh, dude, don't put this. Anyways, the community. No, don't put that video. Oh my god, you put an, a moment in an anime that's really bad. Well, the anime is not bad, but the moment is really bad. Goes Ballistic. Everyone's review bombing, content creators are memeing the game all over. Raymond is probably claiming another one of your girls. The crazy thing is that he hasn't even banged a girl. As we speak, shut it down. Can we shut stop with those, please? Well, and supposedly the company did an apology. The community hated it. They also possibly bought reviews. The community hated that too. They even apparently changed Raymond to a female character, just removing him entirely. This overall irreparably... Um, so there's a few mistakes here, but this is like very nitpicky. But essentially what happened is that Raymond, the character, um, was essentially 
a friend that she met. So full context, in GF1, you meet a lot of those uh, girl dolls. Okay, so imagine Android from like um, Neo Automata. So they're all based on weapons, right? And essentially, at the end of the story, you split up. You, the commander, split up from the, the dolls and then go and live their life as they want. Ten years later, you group up again. Essentially, by talking to some of those girls, you learn what they've been doing in the past. And one of them, Diana, or Diane, or whatever her name is, tells you that she met this guy and she talks about him. Essentially, people were counting the amount of time where she mentioned the name Raymond. It was like 40 times or whatever. And she only mentioned the name of the commander like three times. So people were like, we're literally getting cucked. Even though there is no... Um, she's not telling she was dating him or anything like that. Essentially, she's just saying that she met that guy and they had a relationship, which uh, could have just been a friendship, right? Uh, she's just talking about a friendship, but some players chose to look into it and be like, okay, this means a natural relationship. We're getting cucked by this guy. So they complained so much that they decided to, to replace the character by a female character. Now, the problem is that when they did this change, quote-unquote problem, by the way, they also added that lightning pendant that you can see on the weapon earlier, right? Uh, and the thing is that people were looking into that and essentially the pendant has a lightning and lightning is a ray, Raymond. So people were like, oh my God, the pendant means Raymond, they're still cucking us. So that's how the whole problem went. And also I, like having pictures of heavenly uh, delusion is crazy here. This scene is horrendous, and uh, this gives me PTSD. Anyway. ...we destroyed the game's reputation until today, and it almost looked like the end of service for it. But fortunately, it seems to be coming to the West as well, so I guess we can see if the game's actually an NTR simulator. I'm ready to get cucked. Now, you may Same. also have heard of a game called Azure Promilia, a highly oh. anticipated game People of an complain amazing because it was one world male where you can explore in... Oh no, concept art was leaked for a male character. <laughs> the fans went ballistic on Billy Billy, asking for answers, not wanting to be cucked once again. There's so much cucking going on over there, it's no wonder they have over a billion people at this point. Well then the company I've been had reading to make a formal Evolution. statement it's pretty to good, assure them but that no one scene is uh, really to the hard to, to read stop all the or rioting. watch. As you can see, this appears to be a common issue in the gacha community in Personally, China. And now me. many games are afraid of making male characters in general for their games. Not only do they often sell less, but now they can get you into hot water with the fans. Male characters in games are dangerous oh waters. God. Just when they were starting to get introduced into games more. But where should the fans turn to? It's crazy. Please, God. I need a game with a self-insert character and only hot women. No disgusting men that can see them except for me. Welcome to our Coomer Messiah Snowbreak oh Containment Zone. We have hit no. literal peak design and story. The Mona Lisa of gaming. A game so shameless, it became renowned for its absurd outfits and its groundbreaking story of you canonically starting a harem and also canonically marrying multiple of these girls. It's part of the lore. It's completely natural. Meaning, if you don't marry multiple girls at the same time, you are literally not playing the game correctly. But the game wasn't always like this. Nope. Originally, it was just a third person. I told you, it was fine. But when they started losing player, they turned up the, the kumari. ...and shooter gacha game with some waifu characters. And it was steadily going towards end of service. Yep. It was like the Titanic. It had run into an iceberg. It was leaking money every single month. Yep. It was dipping below $1 million a month. Things weren't looking amazing. Then around in April, they had a genius idea. That's what I told you. Every game that is struggling game. is just going toward of porn. Clothing and then it works again. a first-person dorm system. Dear God, we've done it. <laughs> Scanly clad wedding costumes? Check. Dorm systems where you can interact with the characters in a first person and even massage them? Check. Snowbreak reported that 70% of its revenue is from PC, and the July mobile game oh revenue tracker estimates around $7 million. So this game's popping up every month now. Snowbreak became so infamous, it's become a common term to describe games going the Snowbreak route when they start to go full Coomer. Gaming 
is saved. As you can see, there appears to be a lot oh of popularity recently with Coomer Gotchas. We even have a game called Nornium coming up, yep. and holy, what a cultured game. They even named their beta a foreplay test. <laughs> and yeah, this game's also going to be on Steam. Thanks, Gaben. So China not only seems to have an underlying dislike for no characters in Gotcha games, but also oh loves my God, so female characters. So what kind of games do you think we'll be seeing more of in the near future? Now let's move a bit around a Asia and now focus on South Korea. Bad. There's one business big incident is business. I wanted to go over that I teased earlier in the video how degenerate gotcha players defeated the government. June of last year, 2023. South Korea began to really crack down on sexualized games. The Game Rating and Administration Committee, GRAC, is a government agency that essentially rates games and determines what ages are allowed to play them, similar to the ESRB in the West. For anyone who doesn't know, porn is banned in South Korea. Yeah. However, they have a ton of other things that can be over-sexualized, such as gacha games. Now. Most gacha games are rated as being a 12 plus game or 16 plus, depending on iOS or Google Play stores, such as Azur Lane or Goddess of Victory Nikkei. When games are 18 plus or for adults, they're unable to do advertisement or any promotions on the app store, and they're much harder to find and as- Yeah, that's the problem. So that's why essentially what they're doing is that they're making the game not M rated essentially, so they can actually promote them but then they censor the crap out of it. So that's why they're still being promoted, essentially. As many know, marketing is everything. Now comes the star of the show, a game named Blue Archive. Oh God. A 15 plus teen rated game that has a very, very dedicated community. We're going to have them stuck in the wall. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, you know, I, I heard that idea and I said, you know what, you can be the employee of the month. Originally a Nexon game from Korea, it became a worldwide phenomenon, especially in Japan, I wonder why. So dedicated that at the recent Comic Hat, which is essentially Japan's Comic Con, they had more Blue Archive art and booths than any other by a large That's margin. That's crazy. Essentially the plot of the game is you're a sensei, or teacher, at a school for a bunch of super powered girls that police the city and deal with threats like gangs I'm or getting terrorism. spoiled. However, some of them are dressed a bit, well, you know. And oh, also almost all of them are canonically under the age of 18. Like they tell you specifically. Some yeah. aren't even old enough to play their own game. I will say, I think that, I, I'm gonna say this again. They can say whatever they want about the age of the character. You can tell me that the girl on the right, uh, on the left, sorry, uh, Hashino, I think, you can tell me she's 50, she looks like a kid, okay? Some characters, you can tell me she's 14, she looks like a 25 years old. It is what it is. I think that if you like some of those characters because they have woman, and I mean woman body type, I think it's not the end of the world. Now, if you look at this girl on the left and you're sexually attracted to her, I think this girl is not petite, okay? I think this girl is a little girl. So I think this is just a case of freaking open your eyes, stop lying to yourself, and just be like, what does she look like? A kid. If, does the other character look like a kid? Maybe not. It's like... Great. Thanks for leaving oh, no shit. room for doubt. I don't think that, that if you like Blue Archive, you're automatically a P word. Some people just like it because it's cute. Personally, I like it because it's cute. It makes me a bit uncomfortable when they're alluding to sex stuff with characters that look like kids. Sometimes they're alluding to sex stuff with characters that look like adults, and it doesn't bother me. That's that's it. It's just like, look at Jotaro from freaking Jojo Bizarre Adventure. Jotaro is supposed to be 15 or 16 years old in Star Crusader. Does he look like a 15 or 16 years old? No, he does not. So I think if you look at him and you think he's hot, that does not make you a pedo. So I think it's just like, use your brain, it's not that deep to figure out. Now the important thing is, the GRAC set their sights on Blue Archive, which would end oh, no. up being their biggest mistake. The senseis of Blue Archive will die for their students. So they made the decision to change the age rating to 18 plus because of some of the character designs, essentially making it an adult game. And it wouldn't be able to do much promotion either. But what the GRAC didn't know is that the senseis were united <laughs> and would not take it. 
The sensei is Man, only... look at all those girls. That's crazy. There's so many women playing this game. It's insane. 5,489 strong. I feel vindicated. <laughs> signed a petition to the South Korean government accusing the GRAC <laughs> of unfair treatment and corruption and asking them to be audited anything to aid their students. Oh my God. What they didn't know is they were exactly right. It the worked. National Audit Office investigated the GRAC and found that not only were they exaggerating work done and mislabeling games ratings to pretend to be working, but there were also accusations of embezzlement. It turns out they're using government funds for Bitcoin mining and the laundering Coopers the rest. Won. Blue Archive superfans had accidentally uncovered a corrupt government students in their favorite video game <laughs> worked and helped to uncover governmental fund embezzlement. This is crazy. You pick see them up. Fraud <laughs> agency. People were fired and prosecuted, and the entire agency's business operations were actually oh suspended God, for it. The senseis had taken down the literal rating board for games in their country temporarily. Oh A game I used God. to play an insane amount of Epic 7 at one point was trying to censor some of its characters or its age rating was actually going to be raised. So, uh, yeah. I guess that rating board was getting in the way of the designs people really craved. True. Do we even need to discuss games oh like Goddess God. of Victory and Nikkei? We all know who and what these games cater to, and they're all absurdly popular. Finally, I love Nikkei, I leave me alone. I'm a girl. Even the most popular gacha games made by Hoyoverse have begun to embrace this behavior. You can't tell me <laughs> that Honkai Star Rail, Jade's trailer, wasn't literally just her Step as a dominatrix me. dommy mommy with a whip, and men on their knees before been. her sweating. And now with Yun Li, they non-stop focus on her feet in yeah, that's, every that's single weird. shot they can. Even her ult animation shows them for no reason at all. There's no way it's a coincidence. Then look at Zenless Zone Zero. You have Zhu Yan's trailer, yes! and a third of it is focused on her massive ass. And As then also should. Jane Doe's butt oh! jiggles when she walks. Queen! And also look at Nicole. I mean, just her design overall is really sexual. Even the yeah, largest gacha like company's games are embracing the Coomer audience more. Now, what do all these incidents have in common? They all contribute to having games become more sexualized and cater towards the Coomer audience. These were just some examples, but there's honestly plenty others. However, there is one game that transcends all of this. It goes beyond to another plane. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a bunch for watching. Please consider. I think this here, that's there the game I was talking about. One. This is this is the poor. Uh, sorry, that was this is the anti game uh, I was talking about earlier. I think this game is called Tai Kami. Tribute to. I think that's the anti game I played. One game that transcends all of this. Yeah, I think it might be it. Anyway, there's some literal hentai game out there. It goes beyond to another plane. I hope you enjoyed the video. It Thanks might be so another one, watching. to be fair. Let's be real. There's so many, like, hentai gacha games that exist out there that, I mean, there's just a bunch. So if it's not Taikami, it's going to be another one. Please consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll be making more videos like this. And I hope to see you next time. Oh, it's Goon Time. So it must be this one. Yeah, this was a great video, by the way, Chad. Uh, I really liked it from Genozad. I, I think this might be the first video I've seen from him. This is not the first video I've seen. Um, like, be on my timeline from him. But this is the first one I actually watch. Do check him out. Do leave him a like. I'm going to do that right now. And uh, yeah, here's the link for him. And uh, yeah, absolutely great. This is a nice... Um, uh, just lovingly going over everything here. Uh, let just me let me see the game he was talking about. One day quick. I was perusing the Gacha Game subreddit as I my new favorite hardcore. P oh, that's the game I was talking to. Never mind. This is the game I mentioned earlier. This is the game I haven't played this game. I haven't uh, watched this video, but this is the game I mentioned earlier. This is the game where you have your army, and if your girl lose, they get freaked. Uh, that's the one I was talking about with the whole like NTR and guy like only trying to play their male characters because they didn't want to get cucked. This is so funny. <laughs> uh, definitely check this video as well. Anyway, Junasad, what a lad. I'm going to subscribe right away and uh, we'll probably be watching more videos from him because uh, that video was uh, 
That was nice. That was a nice video. I enjoyed it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. You can catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash kittycathy. If you are on YouTube right now, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time.